I don't know about you, but when I first started designing characters with AI, I wasn't ready to go all in and pay for a monthly app. So if you're just starting out on your AI storytelling journey, and you want to create consistent characters for free, I'm about to show you the AI tool that's got your back. But I wanted to quickly let you know what else I've got in store for you, so you can get all the value that you can out of this video. After I show you how easy it is to create your characters consistently in this free AI tool, I'm going to show you another free tool that you can use to refine your image's style or even change it completely. All right, let's dive right in. Head on over to labs.google/fx. The link, of course, is the first thing you'll find in the description below. This is what you'll see. Click on image FX to get where you need to be. I created a few character descriptions ahead of time. We'll be creating four characters in various styles, two humans, a fantasy creature, and an animal. We'll start with Klaus von Bommel, who was from one of my early bedtime rhyme stories. His character description is super simple. 2D minimalistic illustration of a little boy. Klaus van Bommel is a 10-year-old Dutch boy. He's a rosy-cheeked boy with orange, short but wild curly hair. He's wearing a white short-sleeved shirt, brown suspenders, and brown shorts. He's barefoot. And I'm not going to change any of these settings. There we have it. Those are perfect exactly what the prompt asked for. So now I'm just going to click on this lock here to close it. When locked, the seed will guide our next images to look just like this. Okay, so let's add to this basic character description to give Claus something to do. He's running down a grassy hill and into a field of springtime wildflowers. His arms are spread wide as he runs. There we go, that's perfect. Now, let's delete this bit about Claus running through the field, but I'm still going to leave this character description. Now I want him to be standing on a dirt path with a sad look on his face. His whole body is drooping. It's raining, and the sky is sinister looking and stormy. Now, I'm not at all sure why we only got one image, Sometimes it generates four images, sometimes only one or two, but regardless, I'd say it nailed it. All three prompts returned a consistent Claus Van Brommel showing totally different emotions in brand new scenes. And the style is pretty consistent too. Don't forget though, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can change the style with another free tool. So don't worry too much about the style just yet. Okay, now let's try creating a character that's got a bit more detail to her. I'm not going to read the prompts from here on out because they're all pretty lengthy, but feel free to pause here if you want to get all the details. And I'll copy that into ImageFX. And then I want to make sure I unlock the seed button. Otherwise, we may get some weird version of Claus Van Brommel dressed like a grandma or something. So we got four images this time. And they all look like character sheets, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just not what I asked for. And I think all this weird text is because my prompt has labeled sections versus just straight description, so I'm going to edit the prompt a bit so that we don't keep getting words on our art. And FYI, I'm doing a little live experimentation here because I haven't tested out all the styles I'm asking for today. So in this image, I asked for... 2D yarn art. So I wanted to see a yarn type texture. Instead, I just got a plain 2D illustration. Not a problem though. I'll show you how you can fix that later. And now that I'm done deleting the headings from my character description, let's give grandma something to do and a scene to do it in. And again, don't forget to lock down grandma's seed. Grandma is pulling a steaming hot apple pie out of the oven in her minimalistic, modern kitchen. Again, just added that to the bottom of her character description. Not bad. Not bad at all. I think I could use any of these. 
Okay. What should we ask for her to do now? Grandma is sitting on a porch swing at sunset. She's holding an open book in her lap, but she's not reading it. Instead, she's looking at the sky with an expression of awe on her face. I'd say all of these came out pretty well. My only complaint is a small issue with her wearing glasses and also having glasses hanging around her neck. I can erase the ones around her neck easily enough, but if that's not something you want to do, a quicker fix would be to adjust the prompt to omit the glasses hanging around her neck. Then you can just regenerate these. So up next, I'm testing out a fantasy creature. The first tool I ever used for creating a goblin did horribly with consistency, and that's a paid tool. It's actually embarrassing how bad it was, but despite how obviously AI it was, I still published this goblin video. And so this prompt is similar to the one I used to create all of those images. So I'll paste that in, unlock the seed, and click create. Oh, looks like my session reset itself since I had to take a little break. No worries, I'll do that again. Nice, I like all of these. At a glance, they look really consistent. I knew the trinkets on his belt might be a challenge. You can see that they change between images, but honestly, I think that's kind of funny. If it annoyed me, I could always omit it from the prompt. But I'll just leave it as is. Now for the moment of truth. Can we keep this same goblin in the next scene? The goblin is running away from a mob of angry fairies. The goblin is running through the forest, directly at the camera, and the angry fairies are slightly blurred behind him. Let's lock up the seed again and click Create. Okay, so I had a feeling that might be too big of an ask, so there are no fairies. But he is running towards the camera in these, and the background is blurred. And I'd say that compared to the first round of images, he looks pretty consistent, too. Let's try another one. Seeds still locked. Just going to change these last two sentences. The goblin is sitting on a log at night in front of a fire in the forest. He's warming his hands in front of the flames. He's got a mesmerized look in his eyes as he stares at the fire. These aren't too bad, definitely consistent to our other two batches of images, but I'd say he looks more scared or surprised than he is mesmerized. But the expression on this one could work. And honestly, guys, I'm only giving each of these prompts one shot here. If I were actually using these for more than just example images for you, I might regenerate some of these to see if I can get them perfect by rewording the prompts. But for a first try with such a long, detailed prompt that could get misinterpreted and misconstrued, these are amazing. So who's ready for our last consistent character? I have a feeling if ImageFX did so well with a goblin, this next test should be a breeze. But hang on for just one more batch of images because I don't want you to miss out on the game-changing free tool I'm going to show you next for even more control over your images look. But anyway, I'm an animal lover, so making sure I can create consistent animal characters is a must with how often they show up in my stories. So let's create a 3D animation style Siamese cat. Don't forget to unlock that seed and create. These aren't too bad, though I do wonder why she has such a pained look in most of these, but they'll do for an example. Okay, let's put this kitty in the bathroom and make her mischievous. And what do curious kitties do in the bathroom? That's right, they unroll toilet paper. Whoops, and I almost forgot to lock the seed back up again that time. Well, someone stole part of our toilet in that one. Can't use that. But I like different things about all of these other images. I'd definitely bring one or two of these into Photoshop. I like this cat the best, 
but we're missing the TP on the wall. And this angle is my favorite, but I'd want to add a length of paper leading into the pile over here. And I mean, this one is kind of cute, too. Let's try one more scene for our kitty. The cat is stuck in a tree. She has a fearful expression on her face as she looks down at the ground below. She definitely looks scared in all of these, but I wouldn't say she's looking down in any of them. Still, depending on what the story is, these could be usable, especially if you have plans to animate them with an AI video tool. And as you can see, these cats are all consistent between scenes. I have no complaints. ImageFX is a free AI tool that works better than at least two other AI tools I know of that cost $10 to $20 per month. Well, at least to access their consistent character features. Need I say more? Okay, I know you've been dying to find out the other AI tool I've been teasing you with. I've been totally obsessed with this one lately. I've already done a few videos about some of its premium features, but the free plan has a couple of notable gems worth mentioning too. Let's say you're not impressed with the style image FX spit out. Like this image, for example. Remember I wanted it to look like it was made out of yarn? Well, that just so happens to be one of the styles you can get access to in Design AI's free plan. So let's see what it does to this image. I'm going to leave these sliders here alone, but I am going to turn on the color match and face match options. Well, these suck. They turned grandma white, but it could be my fault because I also forgot to add my prompt in here. And by the way, I could let design describe the canvas if I didn't have a prompt, but since I do, I'll just go back into my library in ImageFX, click the image I want, and then I'll flip the card over here to reveal my original prompt and seed. I'll copy my prompt and paste that back into design. Let's try that one again. There. These are much better. I think I like this one the best. Let's do one more example with our cat, because I really don't like the way that ImageFX does 3D animation style images. Oh, and pretty important word of warning, there seems to be a glitch in ImageFX download process. Hopefully by the time you watch this, this will be fixed, but for me, anytime I download from this thumbnail screen, I get a super tiny unusable image. Look how small this file is only five kilobytes. So if you find yourself having the same problem, make sure you click in to see the full image and use the download link here to get a bigger file. Such a huge difference. Anyway, I was saying that I'm picky about my 3D images and design has a bunch of 3D styles to choose from. Seriously, my only complaint is that there's no search bar to navigate all these. Over here, they're broken up into sections, so that might help you find what you're looking for a little bit faster. Let's try this dreamy 3D style. The bathroom in this image is looking a little too grungy. It could definitely use a dreamy makeover. There we go. I like this style a lot better. And I think this one's the winner. It totally fixed that toilet paper roll problem I was having. Instead of the roll unraveling along the wall, though, it's completely empty. But that works, too. And look at how her eyes have brightened. The overall lighting has improved, too, I think. The bathroom's not gorgeous, but it does look a little nicer now. Anyway, here are some other examples that I tested out before I started recording of how this chubby pug looks when we put it through various styles on design. This is the image FX generated image. Then we've got minimalist cartoon, neo-digitalism, toon face, another example of dreamy 3D. Can you tell I like that one? This one's everything kawaii, 3D pixel for that Minecraft look, Paper cutout, which is pretty cool. 
and colorful felt. And that's just a tiny sampling of all the styles design has to offer. So have at it, my friends. Give design's image-to-image tool a try and never worry about having a consistent style for your stories again. I actually use this a lot when I've got to make images from different platforms look more cohesive so that I can use them together in the same story. Now, as you may have noticed, ImageFX doesn't have much to it. It's a very simple platform, which may be good if you're new to all this and want to get going as fast as possible, but if you're looking for a platform with more robust features to take your consistent characters to the next level, you definitely don't want to miss this video right here.